Hello, Namaskar and welcome to the CAA show. CAA, as all of you know, is Conversations and Analysis and my name is Jaggi Basi. So now that the heat and dust of the elections have settled down, the major political parties would be probably holding a review of what went right for them or what went wrong. And the BJP, I'm sure, would be holding a review of what went wrong for them, especially in the Hindi heartland in the state of Uttar Pradesh. Now, there are lots of reasons. Uh, many of those reasons have been discussed already in social media. But one particular reason has not been particularly focused upon or highlighted. And that is the media strategy of the BJP. Because believe it or not, this time, especially in these elections, the media has played this absolutely pivotal role in deciding the fortunes of political parties. That is the fortunes of the BJP, which have obviously gone down in these elections, and the fortunes of the Congress, which are, are on an upswing. And largely, the media has to be credited for both these occurrences. And I'm sure the BJP is discussing uh, these particular issues in closed door meetings. But what is also very significant is the appointment of Ashwini Vaishnav as the minister. He's obviously the real minister, uh, a portfolio which you all had even before this. But he's also the IT minister and to my mind the most significant appointment in this cabinet. He's also the information and broadcasting minister because this ministry can play a very pivotal, a very crucial role in shaping the media uh, contours, a media strategy for a political party, its outreach which as now we know in these elections that the media plays such a vital and a critical role in elections. Anurag Thakur, uh, Thakur, the earlier minister who was in charge of information and broadcasting, a well-meaning man, a very uh, pleasant looking, um, uh, nice man in a way, but he was a little ineffective in this particular role. But in the hands of Ashwini Vaishnav, who now both has IT and INB, things could be very, very different. And therefore, we're going to talk about that particular aspect also in this podcast. But first, let me take you a little bit back again in the elections and talk to you a little bit about the Congress strategy. What really worked for them? Because unless we understand what different things the Congress deployed to make a very effective media strategy, we would not be able to understand how the BJP can go forward. And therefore, let's take a look at the Congress strategy. I think the number one point in the Congress strategy was quite literally to create one controversy every day, quite literally. And it did that with aplomb, aplomb as they say. Whether the news was real, whether the news was fake, they somehow managed to create a controversy about just about everything that was going on. In other words, they ensured that they were in the public eye 24 into 7. And they did that not only through their spokesperson, but they did it actually more, much more effectively than the YouTubers, which are aligned with the Congress party, the, the Dhruvratis, the Karan Thapas, the Kar Arfa Khanums of the world, Anjum, Ajit Anjum, all these people, they played this huge role. Even people like uh, Yogendra Yadav, actually, who... Uh, Generally, people laugh and scoff at him, but he also came into his own, in his own way. So all these people, the entire YouTube uh, caucus, I would call it, of the, of the Congress dispensation, they all combined together very effectively in projecting the cause and the image of the Congress party. So the strategy number one, a controversy a day. And why was a controversy necessary? The controversy was necessary to sow doubt in the minds of the public to in a way, mislead the public on so many critical issues to question the efficacy, the question, the track record of the BJP. All these objectives were achieved by the Congress strategy of creating a controversy a day. And they did not only do that in the elections. If you notice, they have been continuing with the strategy even today. Every day, even after the swearing in NIFTA, even after the new government has taken over, they're continuing with the strategy of a controversy a day. The second strategy, of course, was the strategy of fake videos, especially the fake video of the Home Minister, 
uh, where he is making these pronouncements in that fake video about the reservations, which has played such a critical role in tenting the popularity of the BJP in Uttar Pradesh. Because now as reports are coming in, it now appears that that particular video, the fake video, it was there on the phones of practically every young person in uh, the BJP ruled states, in UP especially, and uh, large parts of the Dalit population who felt very insecure, who felt uh, that maybe this was real. So that fake video narrative was also very, very effective as strategy number two of the Congress party. The third point, and the third point is something which we also need to take into cognizance, which has played a very, very critical role in these elections. That was the guarantee card of the Congress party. Now, please understand, traditional forms, today we are, of course, all of us are gung -ho about social media, but the traditional forms of publicity, like posters, like this card, for instance, or, uh, you know, there used to be a term in the old days called field publicity. Field publicity actually used to be a unit in the information and broadcasting ministry, uh, the screening of films, etc. People think that in the new age, that in the 2024 and uh, 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 during our times, all these media outreach methods have become outdated or irrelevant. I don't agree. They are still very relevant. And the guarantee card is a prime example of that. It was a form of communication, a form of outreach, and it has played such an effective role for the Congress party. And therefore, I think people like Ashwini Vaishna would be taking a relook at this form of communication also. Posters can, again, can be a very important form of communication. So it's not only the YouTubers which have played a critical role. The Congress very deftly combined their YouTube network. They combined it with these traditional forms of publicity like the guarantee card to score big wins for the Congress party. And of course, the fourth point being that in this entire new over uh, outreach of the Congress party, the role of the spokespersons of the BJP, be it the government or even their um, allied YouTubers, that is people who have a certain right wing ideology or the people who support the BJP, they were completely ineffective. I have mentioned this in an earlier podcast also that opposed to younger, fitter, more um, well conversant, more communicative YouTubers of the Congress party, the right wing YouTubers were, to my mind, they were very iffy, uh, very geriatric, old fashioned. And the big, big mistake which many of them have made is that they were laughing and scoffing at the opposition all the time. See, once in a while, humor is important, humor is necessary in these proceedings. But you have to take your opposition very, very seriously, which nobody was taking. They were laughing and scoffing at the Congress party all the time. And therefore, this probably rubbed off in the wrong way on people. And just to give you one example, there was one particular or rather, there is one particular right-wing YouTuber, uh, Abhijit Ayer. And I have criticized him in the past also, and I will not hesitate to do the same. Uh, he speaks on many things in support of the BJP, but what does, how does he do that? He comes on show sometimes wearing a burqa, sometimes wearing a hat or a beard or all kinds of funny things. See, you have to decide. Are you doing a comedy show or are you doing a serious political show? The lack of gravitas, the lack of seriousness, the lack of research in some of the right-wing YouTubers was actually the reason for the big downfall of uh, contributing to the BJP. All these factors combined together and the B BJP media strategy. And not to forget, and not to forget, the head of the BJP IT cell, Amit Malviya, to my mind, he has lost his mojo. He has lost his sheen. He appears now as an arrogant person. He appears now as this know-all person who knows everything. That's not the projection you should be making on social media. Social media is an intimate platform. It is a conversant platform where you are, even if somebody is hurling abuses at you, somebody is hurling facts and figures at you, you have to match that by being steady, by being calm by being collected in your approach by being very communicated in your approach all that was missing from the media strategy so in summation the congress strategy was extremely effective uh, 
a lot of us were observing that uh, we were hoping that it would never come down to what it really came down to ultimately in the end but yes the bjp uh, paid a price for it they had to pay a price for it because their response was uh, did not match with the robustness of the congress campaign now let's come to the present let's talk about ashwini vaishnav uh he is obviously a lot of people say he's the blue eyed boy of the prime minister or prime minister modi and rightly so because he has done wonders in the rail ministry we all know that and i'm pretty sure uh in the corridors of power in the uh, wood panel rooms and the back rooms of the bjp uh, a lot of hope would be pinned on this young man he's comparatively young uh as to what he can deliver for the bjp especially as i said the media outreach which is now everybody has come to recognize as being of crucial significance in election making and i think the first issue probably which uh, ashwini vaishnav has to grapple with is the role of international social media platforms platforms like meta of instagram of twitter what kind of a role did these platforms uh, have during these elections did they have a neutral role or did they have a biased role was there foreign funding coming for some of the youtubers from the opposition side in the congress side especially uh, just to give you a very interesting example supposing you have a youtuber like dhruv rati i have no idea but i believe he has uh, uh, following runs into millions now there has been, there have been a lot of reports that these millions of youtube uh, youtubers or the people who subscribe to a show have been jacked up artificially jacked up maybe they are bots and meta is doing that i have no way to confirm that i'm just talking about speculation which is there out in the open but if that is true ashwini vaishnav uh, and his team they have to investigate uh this issue very very closely because that is fraud that is fakery and that of course has not only to be condemned but that has to be outrightly banned so they have to investigate that because please remember once you artificially pump up a particular youtuber and his views are running into millions and millions of people then you don't have to send money through hawala you don't have to send money through illegal means that person makes every month from youtube only huge amount of money which can be plowed back into furthering the cause of whatever these people are doing so that's how the system operates so we need to understand that so is that a form of bribery is that a form of uh, some kind of a very novel kind of a hawala route which has been found out uh, by these uh, uh, global tech companies uh and no better person than ashwini vaishnav to find that he has a background in all this in it he understands all that and he is us educated in a top ivy league college he is um, he is a man who knows the stuff he is an engineer so he is the right person for the job so investigate these companies but that has to be done with not only with seriousness but that has to be done with determination because the clout of these companies is huge they are backed by powerful political forces in the west it's not so easy to bring them down but uh, investigation is called for it is absolutely it is absolutely uh, necessary the other thing which ashwini vaishnav actually now will have to bring to the table is there might already be a regulatory authority as far as uh, these companies the tech companies are concerned but the regulated regu regulatory authority ne really needs to have teeth it needs to implement it needs to codify its laws and they have to be enforced with all strictness which means that these companies if they are allowed to stay in india then they have to function as politically neutral platforms they cannot be seen to be see, uh, taking sides or they are pushed by international organizations or international especially within courts western governments to further the cause of certain political entities in this country that cannot be allowed to happen and therefore the regulated regulatory authorities have to be given teeth they have their laws have to be codified they have to be strictly enforced uh and if anybody violates that then uh, whether it's fines punitive fines or whether it is prison or whatever it is they have to be absolutely rigorously enforced that's the second point number 2 and this is a very critical point the 
editorial control of these tech companies has to go. Who are the tech companies to decide for us, that is for us Indians for that matter, how will they and who are they to decide that we are going to allow this to be um, shown to the public, this can be viewed by the public or this cannot or this content cannot be viewed to the public. Let the regulator decide all that. These laws, as I said, have to be now brought in from the platform of the INB ministry by people like Ashwini Vaishnav. They have to be the meta company, all these companies, the tech companies have to completely adhere, adhere, adhere to these laws. They cannot violate these laws. Their editorial control has to be taken away because reports are suggesting that maybe just a handful of 10-15 people of YouTube senior employees in India, they were orchestrating this entire drama. That's the, the those are the rumors which are going on. I have no way to confirm that. Maybe this is all wrong. Uh, maybe this is speculation. But if there is truth in this, then this needs to be investigated. And certainly, their power of editorial control has to be taken away. And as I said, the third point being that penalties of people who violate these laws or who bump up, please uh, hear my words very carefully, bump up political entities or uh, through the root of YouTubers with artificial numbers, bots and other uh, such malpractices there has to be a crackdown on these practices and therefore a large part of what Ashini Vaishnav has to focus on in his term is this regulation of these tech global giants because believe it believe you me they probably have played a very inimical role in these elections number two and this is, I think, a very important point because that is the role of the INB ministry. I'm not going to talk so much about the role. Maybe I'll do another podcast on the role of the right wing or the government supporting YouTubers because that is not so much under the purview or uh, under the per uh, permit of Ashwini Vaishnav. That, uh, that has nothing to do with him. But that is a separate podcast mm -hmm. altogether. But certainly what the Information and Broadcasting Ministry does is of significance, which means that government spokespersons, which means that even the BJP IT cell personnel, all this has to be completely overhauled. You have to bring in fitter, younger, very communicative people, new look people, uh, and to give credit to the Congress Party, I have watched some of the younger uh, spokesperson. Uh, I forget the name of this lady. I think she's from Karnataka, but a very pleasing personality. We have to bring people like that. Pleasing personalities, not people who wear arrogance on their face. People uh, who are younger people, fitter people, people who they are backed with ideas, with uh, research. Those kind of people who now put forward the view of the government. That's mm -hmm. the first part of it. The second part of it is that, yes, social media is important, obviously, and the youngsters obviously tune into YouTube and social media. Nobody so much bothered with the news channels. Let the news channels behave whichever way they behave. Uh, that is not so important. But the INB ministry should also give impetus to traditional forms of publicity, which were operative not so long back, as I gave you the example of the guarantee card. Now, a simple guarantee card of the Congress party and uh, teams of people, workers on the ground, they went door to door and distributed that guarantee card, which especially among the minority community, and it paid such rich electoral dividends for the Congress party. So therefore, the BJP needs to think again on these traditional forms of publicity, posters, cards. If they had a guarantee card, why could not the BJP come out with a matching guarantee card highlighting what the government was doing or what it also plans to do in the future? All this should have been done. It was never done. And therefore, uh, uh, the BJP, uh, the Congress party walked away with the advantage. So a healthy mix, I'm saying Ashwini Vaishnav has to now project a healthy mix of social media outreach, government spokesperson, effective spokesperson, but also traditional forms of publicity. That is the need. That is the need of the R. And finally, I will end this particular podcast on something which is there in the hands of the BGP right now. But if only they wake up to it and they see it, and there Ashwini Vaishnav can play a huge, huge role. There is 
actually an issue right now which is in the hands of the BJP which they should be highlighting, shouting over the rooftops all of the country to build their credibility to win back their voter base once again. And that is, of course, the issue of the Congress Guarantee Card. And I'm a little surprised that a few days have already passed since uh, the swearing in, but nothing much has been done upon that. Please organize teams of people, workers, who will go from door to door. Get your spokesperson, create dharnas outside Congress offices and tell those people that now that guarantee card money, 8,500 rupees per month, 1 lakh rupees a year, you have to pay up now. If you don't pay up, then you face the music. <clears throat> there should be teams of people. All that should be organized as part of a media outreach. <clears throat> Excuse me. All that is the need of the hour. And this can be done by a combination of workers on the ground, uh, the RSS workers backed with the BJP workers. They should be going from door to door. Uh, uh, spokesperson of the INB ministry, uh, uh, sp spokesperson of the BJP IT cell. You should be going all out. This is that huge issue which you had to discredit, to discredit the Congress party. But at the moment, at least, I don't see any such uh, awakening. So I am saying it's a ding-dong battle. Now, this is not going to stop. It's going to be a battle a day, an issue a day, a controversy a day. And only the fittest will survive in this battle. Only the people with razor-sharp uh, faculties in terms of projection, in terms of ideas, in terms of hitting back, fighting fire with fire. That is the need of the hour. And if the BJP can understand this, then there is no reason why they cannot win their lost votes. The people who have left them, they will definitely come back. But you need to fight fire with fire. There's no other way. And if you do that, then certainly uh, the you know all the losses of this election can be reversed. But let's see where it all heads to. But we are, as I said, we are living in exciting times. We are living in times where something new is constantly happening every day. So keep watching the CAA show. We bring you the hot button issues of the day. And as I keep saying, do subscribe to us. Uh, do like uh, this video also. And share this video with your friends. And uh, I will keep bringing you the hot button issues of the day. Always with a twist, with a new idea. Thanks, goodbye and cheers.